this fog and mist that we're going into is uh, quite scary really uh, because um, in various places I seriously cannot tell the difference between the sky and the sea uh, there's just nothing to say there is land there or anything there um, but on that shore um, I can see it and that is one nautical mile away so um, we're going to be going through a little um, passage between rocks we did it on the way up so we've still got all the waypoints in um, but it's just again scary just purely because we can't see as well as we'd like to um, although we are have got 11 knots of wind we're making five of those because we've still got a little bit of tidal assist um, so you know we're just motoring down but the the tide is at least slackening but it's just very scary not being able to see where the heck you're going oh come on there it's not that bad let's get into the spirit of it don't blow your own horn hey Lil don't blow your own trumpet, you daft day. <laughs> I got one note. <laughs> We're in the ferry aisles. Um, I haven't seen anybody prop, hopping about with a, a tutu and a little wand or the slightly more malevolent kind from Lord of the Rings land with the big swords and things. It's all just very, very quiet. It's a little anchorage at the top of Loch Swain and we're hoping to set out a uh, forecast bit of bad weather. And you know, I think this could be just the place to set out a forecast piece of bad weather it's very snug there's no steep hills there's no smooth slopes so there won't be any catabatic winds there's plenty of trees to break the wind up there's plenty of reefs and rocks around to break up any sea state but it's a little bit on the snug side um <laughs> i can't believe if we swing around we're going to miss that rock but apparently we are um no it's we're just looking forward to seeing if it lives up to the hype. There's a lot of hype about this anchorage. A lot of people have told us, oh, the ferry isles, you've got to go there and anchor. Well, here we are. So we'll see if it lives up to the hype or our expectation. But I think we've decided, carrying 50 metres of chain, that what we really, really need from an anchorage is a minimum distance of 100 metres between the two metre depth lines on either side. Um, because that's the worst possible swing situation we could have, where we're fully out on chain, the chain's stretched out, and we swing around a 180 degree circle. So this one's just a little bit on the tight side. It's about 80 metres across and we don't know how steep the sides are. I mean, according to the chart, they look pretty steep. Um, but according to the pilot, it's just a big rock just over again your shoulder that isn't on the chart. <laughs> so you can't really win, can you? So Bev, how did you feel about that uh, passage? Um, <laughs> the passage, eh? It was a passage which exceeded expectation, in my opinion. I was expecting a very boring, dull passage because there's not much wind. Um, it's very grey, it's overcast, it's mizzling. You know you're going to have to use the engine because there's no wind. I wasn't expecting to be doing 10 knots down the side of Jura, but I was. And that was definitely interesting. The track on the chart is normally red. It went bright yellow. Uh, which indicates that you are travelling at some speed. Um, when we got through that, the fog closed in and we couldn't see a darn thing. And I think that bugged Gaynor more than it bugged me. Um, it certainly bugged me a lot. Mm. Whereas I didn't do a lot of instrument flying in my flying days, but I did enough instrument flying that I could do it unofficially because I never took the IFR exam. Um, but I'm, I'm used to trusting my instruments in a situation like that and then looking for cross checks in the physical world around me, which is exactly what I did. I set up all the routes I needed. I made sure that uh, the depth agreed with the depth in the chart. We followed the depth lines. 
Um, I looked down particular bearings until I could see particular landmarks looming in the fog and then I knew I was in exactly the right place. I was quite happy to continue. It didn't bother me in the slightest. It was just a bit inconvenient. Okay, so what momentous event has just happened? <laughs> it's just taken me about a year and a half, I think. And I finally got through. Be honest, you're not slow at Sudoku. It took you about a year and three quarters to find it and then about a couple of weeks to go through it. <laughs> no, it's um, no, it's taken me about a year and a half to go through the Sudoku book. But you did lose it for a while. <laughs> I did. But, you know, I just... You don't really get that much time to... You know, you read. I do Sudoku puzzles. I do other things. But yeah, I'm finally through a Sudoku. You're book. cruising around Scotland. Have you got nothing better to do than Sudoku? <laughs> yeah, well, I finished this one. The next one. Oh my goodness! Crosswords. Okay, I'll repeat the question. You're cruising around Scotland. You got nothing better to do than crosswords. <laughs> well, I've got other things to do. But well, why aren't we doing them? Well, because it's horrible, miserable, grey day, and I like it sunny. Yeah, it's not really the best at the moment, is it? No, not really. Happy then, Bev. What's happening today? Um, with the heavy overcast and rain we've been having, uh, the solar panels aren't having much chance to do their job. Um, it's cold, it's dark, so we're running a high electrical load in the boat and we're not getting much power in. The, it is brightening down over behind me out towards the open sea, but we're at the top of Loch Sween where there's <laughs> clag. So we're just going to run the engine for half an hour. We always knew that in the later part of the year, because we're, we're only a week or two from the equinox now, um, we always knew that the panels would not deliver enough power if we're out cruising and we would then have to do what just every other boat does who, who doesn't have solar panels. You run the engine for an hour a day. We're, we'll run it for about 20 minutes. That'll be enough. Um, but a wind generator wouldn't have done us any good because we're so sheltered in this little nook. There was no wind in here last night. Uh, the heavy overcast means we're not getting much solar. Um, if we were dragging a propeller, well, there's no current through here. We just sit the, the anchor chain just goes vertically down. So a trawling motor wouldn't help us. Um, the solar panel is clagged and clouded out. So there's no wind to drive a wind generator. So we're on the F1 option. And that is to um, press the button and do the obvious. I might be teaching people to suck eggs. I don't know. There might be a few people out there who are unaware of this. A diesel running at idle doesn't generate a lot of power. You've got to put it into about, according to the Volvo manual, 1100 revs is sufficient to generate power to recharge your batteries. Um, but obviously if I put it into forward gear, the boat is sitting on anchor, and then if I put it into forward gear, it will try and go shooting off, dragging the anchor behind it. Um, on this kind of handle, and I presume on other ones, there's a little rubber button just here. And if you press that rubber button in, it effectively puts the engine into neutral and you can dis disengage the gearbox and you can set the revs to whatever you like. The boat won't go anywhere. So I'm going to set, going to push that in, set it to 1100 revs for charging and we will not be generating a wash. We won't be going anywhere. We'll just be running the engine at 1100 revs. So that goes in. We're now, at, uh, we're now at charging revs, uh, we're actually at about 1200, but as you can see, we're still floating on the anchor. We're not shooting off at a lock swing, <laughs> thank God. So in the meantime, we're going to drop salty sausage, put our engine on, and when we've done all that and got her all secured, we'll turn the engine off and then we'll go for a little explore. Okay. Oh, I was really looking forward to going for a little bit of an explore. You know, a bit of a dander day. Oh, I, I, I was just going to put um, uh, the spare kill cord in Beverly's uh, rucksack and we just couldn't find it. And we have just turned the boat upside down looking for it. Anyway, I phoned up Crove Marina, which is where we were yesterday and they have it so i've got fair tide now 
So we're going to lift the dinghy and go. That is the plan. adaptations that uh, Beverly and I made to uh, the cockpit area was putting in a cockpit light. Now it doesn't get used very often but boy it is so useful when you do need it it's there. But we also have in there I also put in a, a light in the locker and again you don't use it often but it's nice to know it's there but uh, Behind me, there are countless balls. Now, luckily, because I'd been in Crove Marina before, I knew where they were and I could follow the track. But there is absolutely no illumination as to where these boys are. And it is so dark in here, I can actually look up and I can see stars. That's just how little light pollution there is. But, but the pontoons aren't particularly well lit and the walls aren't lit up at all, are they? No, um, and although there is a sectored light um, on on the one wall, there's um, a boy just outside. It doesn't have a light on at all. No, no light it, on the other wall. And there's no light on the other wall. So there's only one wall that's got a sectored light on it. One light on one of the walls. So... As I say, I could follow my track, but when Beverly was uh, going up and down the pontoon, up, up and down the side, I couldn't actually physically see the side, so I was like, oh, but I had a track, but oh, it was hard work. I had to guide you to the pontoon, didn't I? Yes, you did, because I literally couldn't see it. Um, it's that dark. Well, I was very annoyed with myself yesterday. Um, mainly because I'd left Beverly's bag here at Crove and it meant that when we realised that we literally had no time um, to do anything it was like a passage that you had to make in a certain time because I only had so much fair tide with me um, but I did it but the main thing is we have got Bev's bag back Bye. Precious. <laughs> oh my goodness sake, girl. But the real reason she wanted the bag back was uh, because it had a purse in it with a driving licence and all that kind of stuff. So we've got it. But oh God, I was just so annoyed. And if we didn't, but we're now going to go through Jorah again. So this will be the third time in three days. Thank you, Gator. <laughs>